in Berlin after a day of what looked like rich, fantastic Ama tourism. Amazing sightseeing. Live from ah. Germany. Happy Tuesday to you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm uh, chiming in uh, right around dinner time, Tuesday night. Um, kind of you to, you know, talk about uh, my day of... Uh, of getting out and about and part of the reason why i was able to do it is because i slept <laughs> like a baby um i did i i told you guys i told you when you're like hey yeah. the the jets game what time does that start your time 2 a.m you're gonna stay up for it and i gave you the two words hell no hell to the, Those no. Are the two smartest words. thing you've ever done yeah. no no because i thought there was a great chance of some sort of reverting to the offensive mean um or you know just 2022 roosting on the Jets offense all over again. And sure enough, I uh, I woke up this morning um, and I, you know, grabbed my phone, put on my glasses, looked at it and saw that, saw the headline that the uh, Jets uh, referring to their offensive output as quote unquote inexcusable. Mm. And I'll be straight up with you. Uh, I might have awakened the people here in my hotel mm. just laughing because I'm like, yep, <laughs> yep. Because why would they uh, struggle against yeah. a team that has uh, one of the worst defenses in the NFL statistically, despite having talent all over the lot? Why, why, uh, why, why would they struggle when they got Brees Hall and they've got Garrett Wilson and they've got, you know, Zach Wilson playing statistically well of late, and then the tape heads like uh, Kurt Warner, uh, my colleague in the booth from this past weekend, Dan Orlovsky. Uh, we had. Daniel Jeremiah, who I adore and uh, respect greatly, saying, you know, Zach is making throws and getting put in situations that are very difficult for him to actually uh, go ahead and uh, and convert. And um, sure enough, that's what happened last night. And so 27 to 6 is the final score. And I got to tell you, um, at that point, I'm like, all right, I'll just look at the, the highlights of it and see all the all 22 types, including Orlovsky show offensive schemes that weren't good enough and throws that weren't good enough and everybody everybody chipped in fumbles by zach and uh garrett with a with a drop right there was a drop in the end zone yep. uh as well by the jets it was a whole host of uh you know slipping up and um I, I honestly thought this to myself guys i don't know if you discussed it earlier but how in the world does a team like the jets with as smart of people in the room, including Aaron Rodgers, I, I assume he's not in the room, but he's in the Zoom. So how how are we how are we struggling? How are we having this sort of problem? How are we not getting better appreciably? We saw it. We saw it. We saw it starting against Kansas City of all teams and of all games on a on a Sunday night against the Chiefs defense that I just saw hold down to it pretty damn well here in Germany. And and they've been doing it. I just mentioned how this is a team that has one of the top defenses in the NFL. Saw, saw them beginning to improve and then winning in Denver. And then, I, I mean, uh, this is one of the two things I thought waking up this morning uh, is the Eagles have to be looking at this saying, how the hell do we lose to this team? How the hell is this the team that we lost our one game to? That's number one. And the other one, just to complete the thought that I've been talking about over the last couple of minutes, how does this team struggle with all these smart people in the room or in the Zoom? And somebody who has to explain basically his name to people, uh, learn the names of the people he's throwing to, um, bring the offensive line around him in the middle of a game, you know, live football, if you will, bullets flying, uh, have to bring them together in the middle of a game to tell them, this is my cadence. This is what it sounds like. How does that guy and Josh Dobbs show straight up to Minnesota and put damn near all 31 of those points against Atlanta in a, a good defense in its own right? How does he do that for the Minnesota Vikings in just five days? And this guy and Zach Wilson and this offense with Nathaniel Hackett and this offense with all those talented players looks like that on Monday night. I don't think there's an answer for it. I don't know if the answer is out there, but I saw what you tweeted out, Chris. And, um, you know, and I'm sure Jets fans are sitting around saying could have had Josh Dobbs here, too. If you want to cough up what, like a six, they coughed up a six to uh, yep. to uh, Arizona for him. He was available. He's sitting out there. Why didn't you go do that to try and uh, at least put some pressure on Zach or at least take some pressure off him? And um, I saw that tweet. And it's a very good thought to be straight up with you, Chris. Because why if he did that in Minnesota in the middle of a game that he wasn't even starting and he just got there to Minnesota and he looked like that 
and he's getting game balls and hosannas in a locker room um, like he got in Minnesota. And Zach Wilson in this offense has got to go back to an otherwise championship ready defense and go, my bad once again. It's just a total, complete, to use the sports talk phrase, abomination on that front. The three-game winning streak right before uh, right before the trade deadline was fool's gold, right? It lulled well, them I mean, rich it into this, this idea moment. that they could survive and get there. Maybe. And I think part of the reason of this, too, uh, is is also it's Aaron Rodgers. It's Aaron Rodgers that, that basically right now, um, I can't. And the reason why I say it's Aaron Rodgers is that they have him in their mind's eye. They spent the trade deadline not going after Josh Dobbs, but apparently going after Devontae Adams to try and bring him here. And in a way, I see what I saw last night, and I understand he didn't light it up with Aiden O'Connell right there, but he has the same number of wins right now as these New York Jets have right now. And that's a, that's a you know, it, it's when I say Aaron Rodgers, I'm not putting any blame on him. I'm saying that they are still putting all their eggs in his basket to return this year to the point where, um, you know, uh, Robert Sala was asked, are you going to replace the play caller? And he said, no. And part of the reason why is because that guy on the screen right there wouldn't appreciate it, wouldn't like it, that that's his guy right there. And he's got to turn to his guy and basically say, do you see that I have no crutches on? Do you see that I'm flinging the ball 50 yards? although nobody's rushing me and I'm not going to get hit. But do you see this? If you want me back, everybody in here, he even told McAfee the Jets have to be, quote, unquote, alive for him to do that. And the problem for them is now they had an opportunity to be a half game out of first and in front of one of the teams that they've already beaten in the Buffalo Bills. Now they're behind the Buffalo Bills. They have to leapfrog them. Now they're going to be behind the uh, Los Angeles Chargers on the, in this playoff hunt. This team could have been seventh in this playoff picture. Instead, they are 11th behind the Texans and the Chargers and the Bills. This makes, makes them less possible to be alive for Aaron Rodgers. This makes them less in the mix later on this year. And the reason for this is, based on all the all 22 guys that I see, is there is zero imagination. There is zero pre-snap motion, pretty much. There is nothing that the Jets are doing to create some sort of havoc and question for the Los Angeles Chargers defense. And the question is why? Why? And the one last thing on Rodgers, while I'm just on a roll here. Um, I hope he's I hope he's coming back. I heard, you know, overheard him say that uh, he told Derwin James, give me a few weeks when Derwin James says, are you coming back? Uh, it would make, obviously, this season that much more interesting. All the Jets have to do is hover around that seventh and final playoff spot for this to possibly happen. Uh, I I don't know, man. Did you see the shoes he was wearing last yeah. night? Did you see those? Mm -hmm. uh, I I mean, th those are the shoes I wear when I've got lower back pain. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's, you know, like th th they look like the athletic equivalent of whatever DeSantis is wearing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I, you're right. I, you know, like I, I I I so I I can't really put too much. It's it is election day, right? Yeah. So I can't put too much <laughs> off here, midterm. stock in any of this. I hope this is there to ha actually help him, um, you know, get back. Because, man, last night, it's just a friggin' shame seeing this defense ball out and do to Justin Herbert things that doesn't really usually happen to Justin Herbert. And they did give up a couple of touchdowns to Eckler, but that one at the end was just window dressing, man. Um, you can't keep three and outing your defense back on the field and expect results. And the Jets defense keeps giving you results and they are balling out. And I hope that that vaunted brotherhood feeling that they keep talking about and, and, and truly mean, uh, I'm not, when I say keep talking about, doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't exist. It does. They need it because off of a loss like that, that is beyond deflating. And now they're going to go to, to, to Vegas where the Raiders feel like, you know, they've just been liberated. Um, and, and then, you know, they have to go to Buffalo and then Miami, it, it doesn't look good. That's a, that, that is a, a crucial loss that the Jets suffered last night. And, and then I guess, let me just say this for the chargers. They are now in the realm of, okay, that's two in a row, but who is it against? Right. Uh, again, that Jets defense is nothing to sneeze at. That is something that they, that they, they did their best to get through and they're playmakers. I mean, 
good to see Eckler back in the end zone a couple of times like that. That catch I saw Keenan Allen make mm, last night mm, mm, mm. is truly one of the best that's out there. Um, and then the defense has got guys all over the map that you have to tip your cap to that when you've got a struggling offense that doesn't appear to be throwing much imagination your way, take care of business on the road in front of the whole country like that line of the night from Troy Aikman saying Robert Sala is you know, surprised that his, his, his beard wasn't turning gray. Because mine certainly would have if I was staying up till four thirty in the morning watching that. Yeah, but Troy. I didn't. Troy was on a bender, Rich. Uh, Troy was going all in. You could sense his disgust in the first quarter, and by the end of the game, he was, he was ripping. And he made the point. He goes, everyone says wait until Aaron Rodgers comes back. He goes, I don't think it matters. He goes, this is a bad team. He goes, it, it's a bad team with a good defense, but I don't know how much better they would be with Aaron Rodgers. And as for those shoes, I told these guys, I, I spoke to Aaron, saw him briefly at the Breeders' Cup here in, in Santa Anita ah. in Southern California on Saturday. He's moving just fine. You know, he gave me the same what he tells everyone. Yeah, you know, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. But those are kind of those those shoes your your yeah. grandfather would wear. You know, walking around the house, they're, they're not meant for playing football, but he's moving fine. Like anybody who just walked in and didn't know who the guy in the purple suit was, they wouldn't look at him and go, wow, that guy's really dragging his leg. He looks fine, which is great. No I, one I'm just is chasing him. Really? I mean, cause you know, uh, again, the team that I just saw lose here, uh, the Miami dolphins are, um, are a team that, uh, leads the league in quarterback hits. Um, when, when you put the jet schedule up again, one more time, if you don't mind. I think they have uh, the Dolphins late in the season. Actually, no, that's not true. They have the Dolphins on Black Friday, and he won't right. be back for that. How, how about that one? Let's just say he comes back. What, Cleveland? Really? You're going to have a guy that, that's that is – That's a TNF let, game, too. Let, let's do, do, do the math. That's uh, two months away. Eight weeks removed from wearing shoes like that uh, to having Miles Garrett come after you. Three days after okay. Christmas on TNF. All right. Okay. You no, know what I mean? No like, chance. I, I, I just don't know if that is even smart for him. Exactly. Even smart for him, because if he does want to play next year and the Jets are uh, clearly keeping the, the light on for him in, in ways that that, um, you know, they're bending over backwards. They damn near. They, I, I can't. How much do you know how much Devontae Adams must have cost the Jets if they if if the Raiders actually said yes? Honestly, don't you think it would have been at least a one back to to, to Vegas for him? Okay. I mean, Could you imagine the look happen. on Devontae's face last night, too, if Zach Wilson overthrew him three times? <laughs> I I think he's he's fortunate on that. I, you know, I I don't want to go full Namath here, man. I I because again, I I I just don't know. Uh, again, um, I, I'm not a film guy. Uh, the, the film guys are really laying it on Nathaniel Hackett's feet today, and um, and so they've got uh, they've got a short week. Here comes Vegas. Maybe they could turn around and look great. I Means crazy things have happened in that town. I'm sure. sure. So um, there you have it. As for the playoff you know. seating, um, yes, sir. Just just one little uh, one little yeah. thing. The guys in NFL Network Research crunched the numbers last night doing game day final, like what could have and, and what might happen. They actually would have jumped to the sixth spot uh -huh. last night. Cleveland would have gone to seven. They would have had Cleveland okay. on conference record. So they would have been in the sixth spot this morning and feeling look, good. They've now, come, the, the one look, thing is they're only a the, game back in the win column for what I it's worth. It. Look, look, but brother, they've come back from their bye week with a lucky win over the Giants. Yeah. And then last night. There's no reason to sit here and think this team is in any way, shape, or form uh, ready to make a run. Uh, you know, take a look at the quarterbacks in front of them. Give me one that you would take Zach Wilson over. Give me one. Oh, on I screen. wouldn't. I wouldn't. You nope. wouldn't. I would you wouldn't. not. It, Herbert, Stroud, Allen, Burrow, uh, Deshaun, um, then Pickett, you know, you 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 You'd have to, you'd have to, you know, pause there for a split second, and then look at his fourth quarter numbers: Tua, Trevor Lawrence, and then Lamar and Mahomes. Forget it. You know, I, I'm not saying it's over. They're four and four. There's lots more to be played. Can he go on some sort of a run or a tear? I'm just wondering why Josh Dobbs is able to do it in a 48 hour period. Maybe it's because he is the pastronaut. As he's apparently the being called right now. Astronaut. It's amazing. I, I, heard like that. I love that. That's great. Yes, that's the pastronaut. Apparently, is uh, is a nickname being thrown out for him, because he's uh, he's brilliant. He's a rocket scientist. That's why he's able to to do this on short notice. Kevin O'Connell can get in his ear and say that guy's running a post to your right. The guy on your left is running, 
you know, a curl route, go for it, uh, kid. And then he can start, he can turn into, you know, Lamar Jackson. Uh, again, I, I'm, 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 um, all I'm saying is I'm very thankful that I was able to stroll around here in Berlin today, uh, feeling good, um, because I was not, uh, uh, battling, you know, 90 minutes rest because I stayed up for that last night. N- not, not to rub it in. Um, no, because I'm not. But it, it did have that. No, this no, guy. no. Seriously, that was an awkward yes. preface. Let me explain what I'm going to say. They were in it, and, and that's what I know. No, is I'm frustrating. Sure is the entire game, was, Brockman? You and I were texting nothing about forever. this, I, I, and it's 14 to nothing. Like all they need is just that one touchdown. Get that one yeah, score, yeah. and then you go into the fourth quarter, and you're just waiting for the strip sack. Yeah. You're waiting for the tip. You're waiting for yeah. the deflect. You know the deflection, the overthrow. Like we're in it. But they couldn't. And, and that's all you were begging for. And the fact that you mentioned the Kansas City game, since the Kansas City game, they have three touchdowns. They've no, been on God. one play drives. I know. One play that's drives. Bad. So I, I'm sure you got the rest of your show to go. I just want to tell you what I got on tap for tomorrow because you're not going to believe it. No, let's do it. Oh, what do you got? Okay. Because, you know, I, I strolled around uh, Berlin today. Um, you taking awesome. pictures. Of, I went to a museum. I actually saw for artifacts. You. It was great yeah. for you. I loved it. The Brandenburg Gate. Um, and again, I, I when I strolled through that, I'm like, you know what? Like 60 years ago, mm-hmm. couldn't do this right now. Couldn't do this. Obviously, I was thinking to myself, you know, like 90 years ago, uh, I wouldn't be able to just be walking around in the city at all. Um, but in going to see these incredible artifacts and and what have you. And again, walking through the Brandenburg Gate where, you know, uh, East and West Berlin um, was divided uh, by a wall. Again, it reminds me to tell everyone to go out and vote today it is election day um that's a, a public service message but uh, tomorrow the reason why i went to the museum is because um susie who's uh sitting in the host chair for the next two days um she says uh she's going to ask around for a guide uh for me to stroll around the town and the, the stroll be the the key word she came back with a bike tour of berlin oh very cool and uh yeah well that's just you know um not my bag yeah do you, know, you, like, do you bike <laughs> rich? I, mean, um, I haven't known you to be a biker i love it siciliano i love it you're, you're sweetheart you're like that's a good idea because maybe that's the sort of thing that you are now now tj's on the screen because tj knows uh as well yeah, not it, it wouldn't be my uh default to you know grab a bike and uh you know start pedaling scoot around town like, like that <laughs> But, you know, uh, again, Suze is uh, saying, you know, hey, get out of your comfort zone. Yep. You should go. You should do this sort of thing. So I am oh. tomorrow. Hopping on the bike? Going on a bike tour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. buddy. Look at Stanza, Rich. Do do the opposite of what you would normally do. That's what I'm this doing. I'm here, right? I'm here. I'm going to museums. You're here. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm Instagramming out artifacts. What else are you going to do? Instead of food. I'm you know, still waiting for the pretzel picks. Don't let Brockman bully you. Yeah, when you're not I know. I haven't those. done that. I haven't done that here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man, I've uh, I got that coming up um, tomorrow. Right. So wish nice. me luck. Good luck. Uh, Good luck. It's, it's apparently it's apparently 12 kilometers. I already looked it up. That's over seven miles of biking. <laughs> and, well, that's, that's, uh, easy. that's not very far. It's flat. That's not it's flat. Uh, that's a it's stage a for me. Let's put it that miracle. way. <laughs> Rich, what was That'll with the uh, what was with the winter attire today? I looked up the temperature. It was only in the mid fifties. No, sir. You it was uh, it was in the uh, low forties. In the in the in the shade. What do you mean? What what are you talking about? What are you giving me crap for this? It was cold. <laughs> it was cold. I was cold. What I want you to know, about? Rich. He he gave you grief in earlier. Thought it was nice, I, but I said uh, for what? I, no, no, no. Brockman said it doesn't look that cold, and I said, yeah, I said it didn't who look cares? That cold. Hold on. Who cares if it's cold? That that scarf and that hat go well together. That's a good look. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, I'm I'm bringing you know. Uh, I'm bringing my A game here to Berlin. I'm just you know surprised I mean? you weren't wearing a giant logoed Rich Eisen show hat. That's all. <laughs> I'm actually disappointed that you weren't. Well, wearing that's because we don't have that gear yet. Um, <laughs> yet. You know, next year, next year in Munich. Um, you know, hey, listen. Tomorrow I'll be biking. Uh, I don't know if that lid goes on underneath the helmet. It may not be a good look for me, but I'm doing it. That's tomorrow. Nice. Um, that's tomorrow. So that's a tease right there. That's tomorrow. Yeah, so All right. that'll be fun. Susie will be here tomorrow, <laughs> and I'll give you the contents of my bike tour. Can't uh, wait. Tomorrow. That's going to be three great. and a half hours, 12 kilometers. 
Wear no a helmet. Brakes. Wear a helmet. Yeah, wear Figure a helmet. Like, take lots of pics. Oh, I got my helmet. Yeah, I'll get my yeah. helmet. Safety All right. first. Yeah. All right, guys. And you so. got to see that. And if you were at the Brandenburg Gate, you got to see the hotel where Blanket was hanging out of the balcony with Michael Jackson. Oh, is that the one? Yes. <laughs> Yes. If What's the name of the hotel? I forget the name. But if you're facing the gate the way you were, is that the, the Hotel de Rome? Is that what I passed by one that looked like it? Let's see. Let, Let me tell you. TJ's walking tour of Berlin probably a little bit different than the <laughs> yes, one sir, you're going to get. Yes, sir. <laughs> the biking tour of all of Michael Jackson's weird <laughs> Berlin moments. Yes. That'll be tomorrow. Yes. You know, I don't well, know what the hotel was, was, but baby. that's it. Thank you no, very this much. This was called the the Hotel Adlon. Kapinski. Okay. In Berlin. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I did pass by that one. Yeah. Okay. And there should be a <laughs> oh Starbucks gosh. across the street. I mean, yeah, there's I saw a Starbucks it. on every corner Shocker. in Berlin. Well, I, mean, yeah, I, I, I was, was there like 20 years and ago. And they speak but... better English than us when oh, you walk fantastic. in. Fantastic. I think I'll go past that on speed four tomorrow. <laughs> speed four. Or is it, is it gear? gear? Is it gear four? Gear. Be careful oh on the cobblestone God. streets. What am I there doing? Bikes. Yeah. What am I doing? I'm getting out of my comfort zone. That's what I'm That's doing. That's what you do. That's what travel's all about. Do it, Rich. That's, do it. That's do awesome. It. Do, do it. Do it. Thank do you. It. Very good. All <laughs> right, guys. All right. Have a good rest of your show. All right. Bro. Likewise. Safe, Be safe. Good, good day, right. sir. Power rankings Enjoy tomorrow from In One Piece. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.